Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. And I'm XGamer Richie. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Rodea the Sky Soldier. Some of you may remember, like, way back when this game was first shown, there was like a trailer and it was all bright and peppy and it had this theme song that kind of went and then it just dropped off the face of the fucking planet. And I honestly don't know why that is, but Richie, you're like more aware of the whole publishing situation, so what the fuck happened? Right. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's one of those stories. Yeah, so the game got revealed in 2011 with that kind of amazing trailer. I love that trailer. Um, but then uh, essentially what happened was that Kadokawa Games, who were publishing Rodea, wanted there to be a 3DS version to make the most of the fact that it was becoming the thing to buy uh -huh. at the time. Um, unfortunately, like the Wii version was completely finished in 2011 and all ready for release. But uh, Kadokawa weren't finished, so they withheld the release of the Wii version. We got to uh, about 2012, there was still no news about what was going on. Then there was news in 2013 that the 3DS version was 70% finished. Saying that it wasn't cancelled, it was still going, but it took them... Like, from 2011 to 2013 to get to 70%. That's kind of a fair for a handheld game, if I'm honest. Exactly. Then, in 2014, um, Kadokawa Games filed a trademark for the game um, to kind of signal that it was it was still happening. Um, but then they announced on November the 14th, 2014, that the main game had switched platforms from the Wii to the Wii U, scheduled for spring 2015. Jesus Christ. And then said... Just because, obviously, the Wii version was the original one, we're going to package that along with the Wii U versions like an initial print bonus thing. And then, finally, the game came out. But, as you can see by the rather pathetic reception it received, critically, and commercially, and just how the buzz around it was just non-existent, this game has been severely screwed over. Man, it's almost like postponing things by three to four years fucks over your initial plan. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And actually, this playthrough is a rather unique kind of experience for us because uh, for the first time, I have not actually played the proper game, but I have played a version of the game. Richie, you've played uh, the Wii and Wii U versions, right? Yes, so I played the entirety of the Wii version, which is what this particular version is, because it's the original version developed by Prope and Yuji Naka. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, for one of the extras videos, I played like the first 20 minutes or so of the Wii U version. I had planned to try and play through the entirety of the Wii U version just to see how different everything was, but then I was just like, nope, this is not <laughs> happening, I'm not ruining what is actually a rather wonderful experience with that crap. And uh, for my birthday, I decided to opt for the 3DS version of the game because I seem to like playing handhelds more than anything else nowadays. Boy, was that a mistake. At the time <laughs> of recording this, I don't think I've got even like a quarter of the way through the game. I literally can't control it properly. Well, if I recall correctly, you will be around chapter 10. So... Uh, yeah, you're not halfway. You're you're nearly halfway, but not halfway. Uh, okay, explain to our viewers what Rodea is all about. What like genre of game is it? Um, so uh, technically, the genre is action and adventure. It's sort of a platformer. It's not really a platformer. It's more an aerial maneuvering game. Yeah, it's like a um. A light gun kind of game, like a rail shooter, but you have to control the rail yourself. Well, exactly. And for what it's worth, I think that what they did here and the gameplay mechanics that they came up with for the Wii version are actually really fun. Because essentially the way it works is that you point the pointer, obviously, yeah. at the screen, and then you uh, just shake the Wiimote to get Rodea to move. Generally, he moves it in a parabolic arc, and depending on which way you shake the Wiimote depends on which way he's going to arc. So as you progress throughout the game, you will gradually have to be more precise in the arcs that you make. And basically, you can just continue flying constantly. There's no limit here. If you can point at the damn thing, you can fly to it. And it's just great fun. 
the Wii U version and 3DS versions, for which the Wii U version is a ported version of the 3DS game. Jesus fucking Christ. That was an excellent decision on Katakawa's part. Um, you have a, a flight limit, and... Wait, you mean that's not actually part of the game? Yeah. The, like, the Wii version has no flight limit. You can just go wherever the hell you like. Oh! Oh, my heart is breaking, Richie. Oh, don't worry. It's it's going to die even more when you see some of the rather wonderful things that this game actually does have. Uh, when you say wonderful, do you mean wonderful, or do you mean wonderful? Well, I I, I mean quite fun and wonderful, rather than the rather sarcastic. This is just awful. Although that said. The plot, as you can probably tell already, is very anime-inspired. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Like, I enjoy it. It's kind of one of those guilty pleasure type plots. But I think with the Wii version as it is, it can get away with it. I don't know whether the other versions of the game can quite manage to sustain its cheesiness. I think when I was like trying to get like a, a handle on what the game's all about, I kind of likened it to the misadventures of Tron Bon, and like mm. it's got that late 90s sort of lilt to it, like yeah. with the way characters speak and act. It's all like sort of over-exaggerated, but still kind of charming. I don't think, and especially on like the 3DS version, it has enough charm to get away with it, but maybe the Wii version's a different kettle of fish. I mean, I think that's exactly the case. The Wii version, gameplay-wise, is incredibly charming, and a major factor of like the plot and character elements that I think makes it work is that they don't talk nearly as much. Ah, yes. Because one of the big problems that was mentioned in reviews for the other versions was that Ion, who's a character who we're going to be introduced to very soon, is really, really overly chatty. There's actually an option in the options menu for Ion's chattiness. Oh my god, she won't shut up! Yeah. In this game, while she is talkative, she's certainly nowhere near that talkative, and it's just the right level of the characters chatting to each other to get you invested in their characters, but not enough to start to piss you off. Oh, there's Ion right there. There's Ion indeed. Hey, can you hear my voice? Whoa, he stood up. Now, th th there's something that I don't know whether it's the case across all versions or what, but there's a slight tinniness that appears around certain characters' voices at certain points in the game. I don't know whether it's how um, NIS America, who did the uh, localization of the game, how they recorded the audio, whether the Wii version had to be compressed in certain places so that they could get everything to work properly. Uh -huh. I don't know, but sometimes the audio does sound a little bit off and certainly the audio balancing is really bad at points. But outside of that, it's a reasonably okay dub, it's not the worst thing you could have Imagined. Uh, I gotta say, like right off the bat, you can see the friggin' Sonic influences. Well, it's Sonic and Knights entirely. <laughs> well, it comes from Mister. I drive a new Ferrari every single day, Yuji Naka. You know. <laughs> exactly. What do you think of Rodeo's design as the Sky Soldier or the Sky Knight? I think he was originally called. Uh, I think it has always been the Sky Soldier. Hmm. Don't know um... where I got Knight from then. Oh, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it works close enough. Um, I actually really like Rodea's design. He's maybe a little bit wimpy looking, but it's a, it's a charming little design. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the tail specifically for balance and whatnot. Uh, yes, so this is a major difference between the two versions of the game. In Rodea Wii, Rodea has like a three hit sort of mechanic. So think about like Crash or the Mario, the original Mario games where you could get power-ups that gave you a few more hits okay. slash improved your abilities. Or rings and Sonic. Yeah. And if you get hit once then you go down a form to the point where if you get to the weakest state and you get hit then you die. Okay, so yeah. Whereas the 3DS and Wii U versions have a health bar, which is a terrible idea. It's awful. It's just, oh my god, it's so bad. Like I'm, I'm physically angry thinking about it. <laughs> now, here's another thing that's different between the two games. The bonus rooms. 
So in the Wii version, you need to collect a certain number of gravitons, which are these little yellow globule things. And once you have collected enough, you can go through these doors. <laughs> You're not flying very well here, Richard. I, I know, I kind of ended up flying to the other side of that wall and they're just like, right, I need to get up and over. But because of the way the flight works, you can do that. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky, but it's a simple process. It just depends how smoothly you can get out. i, I got to say, when you get into a good rhythm, it feels great. But again, on like the Wii U or 3DS versions, thanks to that flight meter, it's just going to drain super quickly and it feels awful. Exactly. Whereas this, it's so free flow that it's joyful. Yeah, it's the joy of flight. Exactly. I mean... You could see the beginnings of this desire for this type of game with Knights. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know whether Yuji Naka had any involvement in Journey of Dreams, but that game introduced, it's called the Mind Sight mechanic, where you pointed the Wiimote and Knights flew in that direction. This is like the next, lo next logical step. Uh-huh in that progress, and I think this works a hell of a lot better. I know that there are certain people who aren't a fan of these motion controls. <coughs> flame! Flame! flame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But I think that they are actually really intuitive. Yeah. And they work really well. I mean, it's literally a pointer. You point and click and you go to where you want to go. Exactly. Thank you, Ion. Could have figured that out on my own, but you're the tech expert, I guess. <laughs> so what are we looking around for here? What are we bobbing about doing? Uh, so, I mean, the main principle of the majority of the levels is get to the end. Uh -huh. There are a reasonable variety of level types, um, some which involve collecting items and then placing bombs, per se, beating bosses, but the general thing is just go through the level. As you progress... You are going to see like the bonus rooms. You're going to see these medal things, which are called legacy medals, which are the game's collectible. They don't actually do anything in this game, okay? But they're a fun thing to try and say. Yes, I got 100%. Oh man, I gotta say, it's so cathartic seeing you playing this, and there's no friggin' joy destroying flight me. It just looks kind of cozy, to be honest. Exactly. And here's the other major thing. Well, major difference between the two games, T versions as you probably say, is that look at the coloration of this. It's bright, it's lively, there's a lot of kind of joy going on in the visuals. The 3DS version is obviously going to be not as pretty because it's weaker hardware at the end of the day. I've got to be honest here, without any hyperbole, it looks like shit. Well yes, and that's because very, very simple models and textures, but also it's all very washed out. Then when they ported that to the Wii U, obviously while it's all much crisper than the Wii version, it looks even more gross because you've got the weird cartoon filter that covers everything, uh -huh. you've got the washed out colours, and it's all the same level design, and it just doesn't function correctly. So you just end up with a mess of a game, whereas this actually has a th logical thought process behind how everything works and everything meshes together. So have we travelled through time at this point? Uh, yes, so what's happened is that Frodea tried to save Princess Cecilia, she sent him uh, somewhere into a desert, and then 1000 years later Ion has found Rodea, repaired him, and he's now in working order again. Okay, but he seems a lot more robotic than he did at the start of the game. Yes, he he's had his memories wiped, essentially. Oh, no, Typical not... anime plot trope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but don't worry, that's going to dissipate as we progress. Now, it's something that you probably won't remember, Tom, uh, but they slightly... Uh, change the way the narrative is told in the other version of the game because they add like a plot summary sort of between certain cutscenes so you have an entire explanation of who Princess Cecilia is and the enemies that we're going to be facing and the world and it's kind of just like 
really, you, you don't need to treat us like idiots. While I would say that Rodeo Wii is perhaps a little overly ambiguous in some of its methods, it's nice that it doesn't talk down to you <laughs> with its plot. Gyardo? Really? Gyardo. Okay. Thought it was a bit on the nose. <laughs> I mean, it is still incredibly on the nose, but still. I want the world! Give me the world! <laughs> I will say, in Giardo's defence, he has got a uh, reasonable reason for wanting to take over the world. Okay. But it is one of those where you're still an evil sod, so we're allowed to hate you. Yeah, don't don't kill my friends, that's not cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anime rules dictate I must protect my friends and, you know, safeguard friendship and all that good shit. What? Emperor Giardo. He's my enemy. I've just decided that now. The game needed an antagonist, one appeared, boom. <laughs> Pretty much. But that is the end of the first level. Not bad. I think you need to uh, step up your game a bit, though, with that C there. Hmm. We'll explain more about that later. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll see you next time for another part of Rodea the Sky Soldier. Goodbye for now.